Hello everyone, Irina here, YouTube historian and language enthusiast. I have a small channel on Viking culture, German and Scandinavian languages. If you like what I post, please subscribe to my channel. Um, so, because nowadays the hot potato of the press um, is the World Championship in Kaffer um, and everything related to um, the human rights issue, corruption, FIFA and, uh, well, we'll be hearing about football in general for uh, a very long time in the upcoming weeks and um, months, I uh, remembered that Vikings also seemed to have had a kind of ball game. So I thought maybe I should talk a little bit about uh, about this. Um, they did not have football, by the way, so let's make one thing clear from the very beginning. Um, so this ball game is called Knackleiker in the sources. It is a game mentioned in the sagas, so these are the later sources, yeah, from the medieval uh, times. So um, basically what people collectively remembered about the Viking Age. Um, and the details about this ball game are extremely vague. Uh, there are no lists of rules, um, but usually when describing the games, some kind of fighting and disputes uh, were uh, also mentioned, as well as uh, bloodshed. So it does seem uh, to have been quite a, um, a violent type of entertainment. Um, a lot is left to our imagination, so was it more like uh, hockey, was it more like lacrosse, was it more like rugby? Uh, different um, reenactment groups have been trying to uh, to come up with the rules of their own to um, try to perform as well. Um, so they, um, these games are mentioned quite often, I would say. So we have, for example, references in Egil Saga in chapter 40, in the Öbigia Saga in chapter 43, Grete Saga chapter 15, uh, Vopfidniga Saga uh, chapter 4, Gisla Saga chapter 15, and a couple more. Um, and yes, according to um, reenactment groups, um, this game could have caused you pretty serious injuries. Um, if from two points of view, so first because bats were involved, so you could have um, hit people, um, your opponents with a bat, and uh, uh, secondly because um, the ball might have also been hit with a bat and um, it did not always go um, above your head, uh, you, you could have been hit um, with the ball as well. Um, it was uh, so violent sometimes that even the later Icelandic law codes known as the Grogos, the Grey Goose um, law code, um, mentioned the fact that a player was free to leave the game whenever he desired and if he got um, injured uh, also severely it was, um, um, it was his own fault. All right, so what do we know about this, um, uh, this ball game? Bats were involved, like I said before. Um, the term used is that um, the more general one, uh, that of wood, so simply wood. Um, these bats apparently could have been uh, broken, but also easily mended on the spot. They could have also been used as some kind of weapon, like a club, for example. They also seem to have had some kind of ball traps, so something to, uh, to catch the ball with. And speaking of the ball, uh, this was a very hard one. It could bounce over the ice, among other things, and it could also be uh, carried by uh, opponents. As for where these games were held, um, here we have um, quite a few references, um, which are not always consistent. Um, so we have mentions, for example, near a pond, uh, maybe also on the surface when the, the pond got frozen, uh, or on the frozen fjord. Mm, or some kind of watery uh, land, uh, less likely on a uh, snow-covered pond, or uh, as we have in Gisla Saga, for example, um, on, a, on a plain below a mountain. Um, in uh, Vopfirdiga Saga, we have the reference to a fjord as well, but this, rather was, this was rather a field surrounded by slopes where spectators could, uh, could follow the games. And speaking of spectators, the games were extremely popular. A lot of people took part at the games, um, even women and slaves. Um, they were uh, rather regional, so involving uh, several farms, actually dozens of farms. Um, and as for the timing, um, most of the references are to autumn, uh, late autumn and winter, even in Yuletide. So 
yeah, almost a Viking Christmas, yeah, late December. Um, okay, as for what was going on, we have a reference in Grettis Saga, for example, telling us that um, a team was lined up against opponents on grounds of their strength. Um, and yes, uh, the strong guys uh, definitely had a bigger advantage um, in, um, in this um, um, game. But on the other hand, not only men were allowed to play the games, they were also very popular among uh, youngsters and it was probably connected to some kind of um, ritual, initiation ritual in, uh, uh, into manhood. Uh, players could hit and catch the ball and run with it um, while the ball was, um, was in play and um, the main uh, idea was to carry the ball um, across um, uh, the field. Um, so yeah, overall we can conclude that the evidence is um, uh, quite vague, um, so there are many unanswered questions uh, rather than um, answered questions. So for example, um, were there uh, hardwood dolls used or cricket sticks or shepherd staffs or was the ball made out of wood or was it a wool felt ball? Um, how many goals were needed um, in order to win? Um, how were goals actually scored? Which was the size of the team? Um, and um, were the balls also hit with uh, the body and were the bats rather used to, uh, to smash the opponent and not to, uh, to hit the ball? Um, either way, feet were not allowed in this, um, uh, in this story. Um, okay, so speaking of the violence uh, surrounding this game, um, I am going to read to you a little bit from the saga of uh, Egil, which um, uh, describes such an event in chapter 14. Um, and um, yeah, you could make an you can have an idea uh, yourself about uh, the atmosphere surrounding these games. Um, and uh, also, I will attach in the description some links with um, a couple of reenactment groups uh, attempting to perform this game uh, as well. All right, so I'm going to read to you directly from the English translation, which is from this book. Yeah, the saga of uh, the sagas of the Icelanders. It is the greatest book ever. Uh, so there we go. Skallagrim took a great delight in trials of strength and games and liked talking about them. Ball games were common in the days and there were plenty of strong men in the dis district at the time. None of them could match Skallagrim in strength, even though he was fairly advanced in age by then. Thought Granis' son from Gramastadi was a promising young man and he was very fond of Egil Skallagrimson. Egil was a keen wrestler, he was impetuous and quick-tempered. Everyone was aware that uh, they had to teach their sons to give in to him. A ball game was arranged early in winter on the plains by the river Huita, and crowds of people came to it from all over the district. Many of Skallagrim's men attended and thought Granason was their leader. Egil asked Thord if he could go to the game with him. He was in his seventh year then. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about children. Thought let him and seated Egil behind him when he rode there. When they reached the game's meeting, the players were divided up into teams. A lot of small boys were there as well, and they formed teams to play their own games. Egil was paired against a boy called Grim, the son of Heg from Hegstadir. Grim was 10 or 11 years old, strong for his age. When they started playing the game, Egil proved, proved to be weaker than Grim, who showed off his strength as much as he could. Egil lost his temper, wielded the bat and struck Grim, who seized him and dashed him to the ground roughly, warning him that he would suffer for it uh, if he did not learn how to behave. When Egil got back on his feet, he left the game and the boys jeered at him. Egil went to see Thought Granason and told him what happened. Thought said, I'll go with you and we'll take our revenge. Thought handed Egil an axe he had been holding, a common type of weapon in those days. He, they walked over to where the boys were playing their game. Grim had caught the ball and was running with the other boys chasing him. Egil ran up to Grim and drove the axe into his head right through the brain. Then Egil and Thought walked away to their people. The people from Nirath seized their weapons and so did the others. Ole Fjalti rushed to join the people from Borg with his men. Theirs was a much larger group and at that the two sides uh, parted. As a result, a quarrel uh, developed. They fought a battle at Laxvit 
where seven men were killed. Okay, so I'm going to stop here because afterwards um, there are some more details about this uh, uh, this fighting fighting as a result of uh, of the game and um, um, yeah the chapter is quite interesting uh, by the way because there is also a reference to Egil's father entering a berserker rage a little um, uh, later on yeah so you could see uh, not only the game was violent but also the um, way people behaved and um, they were pretty bad losers we could say and this is also. Um, some kind of uh, uh, great beginning for Egil's uh, Viking uh, career. Um, okay, if you have any idea about how this game could have been played, please write me a comment and uh, yeah, otherwise um, wish you all the best and please subscribe to my channel. Goodbye.